I mean, if you're lifting in the weight room and you're busting your tail in there and then you're not sleeping, then your, your muscles aren't recovering. Okay, I want to welcome everyone to Coach's Corner Thursday night. Every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, we are joined by college coach, high school coach, minor major league coach that will discuss uh, pretty much everything uh, involving youth baseball, high school baseball, and obviously college and professional baseball as well. My guest tonight, I am fortunate to say, uh, played a significant role as a mentor with my oldest son, Kyle. Uh, we are from Boston, Massachusetts, so it may be tough for some of uh, tonight's listeners to kind of connect some dots. But, you know, Jeff was kind enough to uh, offer Kyle an opportunity to participate within college baseball. Uh, and the biggest purpose for Kyle from a father's perspective uh, was to have a mentor in his life that would allow him to not only gain a college degree, but to be become a better part uh, of the business community, become a future parent, which Kyle is to our grandson, uh, Braxton, as well as a leader uh, within his community at um, uh, his, his job uh, within a cancer consult nursing uh, facility in Houston, Texas. So tonight's guest is Jeff Willis. He's the head coach, seven-time national champion, LSU Eunice uh, Junior College, located in Eunice, uh, Louisiana. Jeff, thank you for joining us tonight, Captain. Thanks, Walter. Appreciate you having me. Uh, exciting to be with you. And um, again, I appreciate the kind words, but on the other side of that, I appreciate you trusting myself and our program um, with your son. Well, I, I tell people whenever I get the opportunity, uh, and as we discussed prior to coming uh, here on the recording, uh, it, junior college now is uh, a much different animal. Uh, than 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago. In fact, I would venture to say it's very different than it was five years ago. Uh, and I know the role that you, as well as the coaching staff at LSU Eunice, uh, played in uh, my son's life as a parent. So I always am spreading the word of LSU Eunice. But when I tell parents, it's simply not a step up from high school baseball. It, it's as close to big time Division one baseball as you're going to get without being at the division one level. Uh, but my thing for that, I would like to have parents have a firm understanding on, and you and I had touched on it over the summer. Can you explain to those listeners and those folks that find their way to the recording, what's going on within junior college baseball now that you feel is different than maybe as few as five years ago? Well, I think there's several things, you know, one, you know, you used to have 40 rounds in the major league baseball draft and, you know, with the COVID year, you, you drop that down way low and now we're at 20 rounds for the draft. And then you've got major league baseball that's going to bring back the draft and follow. And I think that's, that's a huge piece of the puzzle for junior college baseball. You know, when I first started at LSU Eunice, we did have the draft and follow. So the clubs could, could draft those players. They were retain their rights to a week before um, the next draft. Um, they could watch the player throughout the entire year at the junior college level um, against college competition, and then they could sign them or, then, or they could reenter the draft um, and be drafted again. And I think that's going to be huge, um, you know, for junior college baseball. You know, I think the, the professional ranks right now are trying to figure out how do they counter the NIL money? Um, how do they counter all of the things that are kind of going on in major power five conference schools um, and try to get those guys in, into pro ball more, but also into a setting where, they don't get them locked up for three or four years at those four-year levels when they have the ability um, to play professional baseball, you know, right away. And so I think that's a huge piece of it. You know, I think with how many kids that are entering the portal with, without having to set out a year now. And, um, you know, if, I, if I'm at a four-year school and I'm recruiting, um, you know, I'm go, I'm, if I'm at a Power 5 school, I'm going after, you know, the top 100 players in the country. And then I've got to look at who's going to possibly enter that portal that, that may be an all-conference all player – um, at another power five school. Um, and my, I might have more NIL money than that institution has. Um, or I might be looking at mid-major um, all-conference players that might want to move up into a power five type of a situation. So, you know, if, if I had a son, I got two daughters, but I had a son, I, I don't know how much I'd want him to jump into that mix right now. Just understanding how big of a difference there is when a, when a 22 year old 
um, steps on the field versus an 18, 19 year old. And that's not saying you can't play at those levels because you can. Um, but I think you have to get on the field. And I think when you compete for playing time against guys that are roughly your same age, you've got a lot better opportunity of doing that. And then on the other piece of it, it you, you're able to keep yourself available for the Major League Baseball draft every single year that you're in college if you go that junior college route. Yeah, and I, I, I really want you to kind of explain. I get a lot of questions that have just come in tonight, but I also receive a lot of questions via Twitter and, and email. A lot of families are under the understanding that if they're considering a junior college uh, potential opportunity, that it's kind of like the next step. You know, we had Jimmy uh, Sloshnagel on last week, and he was talking about that biggest jump as a high school athlete is high school to college. And I try to tell parents, especially at your level, Jeff, uh, it's a significant jump to LSU Eunice, to Vanderbilt, to LSU. Could you expound upon that for parents and student athletes that are listening tonight about your expectations as a coach and program with regard to making that jump from a high school player to a college player. At the yeah, I, th I think, you know, everyone has to understand, you know, everyone thinks everyone works hard. Um, we all think we have a great work ethic. We all think we have a great attitude. And, and, and when you get into that college setting, you now are surrounded by, by, by like-minded individuals, you know, so it's the three hole hitter on the team that's next to you as well. And I know our pitchers, you know, we started our inner squads back at the end of August, first part of September um, with some really, really good arms. And, and they found out very, very quickly that there was no easy outs in that lineup because everybody was everybody's three hole hitter last year in high school. Um, and so you've got that. But but also, you know, I, I tell people us being in the southern part of the country, you know, you know, with with very, very good climate. Um, I, I've started telling kids that come to our prospect camps or some of our camps. I ask them this question. And, and uh, would you go to North Dakota to play college baseball? And, and that's nothing against North Dakota or the northern part of the country. Um, but, but when you're in the southern part of the country and a kid hears that, if they hesitate in answering that question, then I don't know if they're going to have the passion in order to play at the college level because you're talking about up early. You're talking about going to class. You're talking about practice. You're talking about study halls. You're talking about monitoring your diet. Um, you, you're, you're, you're thrown into to a, a rat race, per se, um, that if you don't have a true passion, a true love for the game, um, it's going to eat you alive. And, and a lot of people like things, um, but you've got to have a true passion if you want to jump into this thing um, because everybody is trying to move up levels and every single player, once they get to college, wants to play on TV and wants to play in the big leagues. Um, but how many of them just talk about it, talk about it versus they walk the walk? So there's a lot of talk, a talk in the talk versus walking the walk. And you're going to have to be, you're going to have to monitor your diet. You're, you're going to have to say no to, to some guys that want to go out and do some things and have some fun. Um, if that's your true goal, are you really, really going to do what you say you're going to do? And so I think it's a huge wake up call. I don't care if they come to any, any college out there. I don't care if it's, it's, it's power five, it's mid major junior college, division two, II, division three, NAI. I think it's a huge wake up call because I, I don't think, you know, there are some summer programs that, 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 you know, condition their players to, to know what to expect when they get to that ne next level. But there's a lot out there that aren't um, just because they're rolling the ball out, rolling the ball out. And it's almost a country club type of atmosphere. And, and what I mean by country club, um, it, it's like a lady that's a member of a country club and, and she's 65 years old and she's retired. And, and all of a sudden she wants to um, she wants to take some tennis lessons with the local tennis pro. And he, he's 25. He's graduated from college probably played college tennis um, and, and he's got a real job. And then he's going out to do these tennis lessons to make some extra money. And most of the time it's extra beer money. Um, and so he goes out there and she shows up five minutes late. She shows up five minutes late and he's not going to say anything to her because he didn't have to work those five minutes. He's not going to tell her, you know, you might need to hustle a little more or, or you, you might need to get in shape. Or, or you might need to lose some weight or you, you, you just you could say all the things come that should come out of his mouth because he knows it, but he doesn't want to say it because he doesn't want to lose his paycheck. And I'm seeing, you know, all the college coaches are seeing this all over the place that a lot of these these venues these kids are playing in right now, they've almost become their self-esteem coaches. 
um, and not, you know, they're telling them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. Um, and then when they get in that college setting where, you know, if you're, if you're going to play in the Southeastern conference, you better put up, you know, or, or you're going and the next guy's coming in uh, because so much money's being spent on that. Um, and that's a professional baseball atmosphere. And so you've got to perform, you've got to put your big boy pants on and you got to be ready to go. And so, I think it's just a big, huge jump, no matter what level of college baseball you go into. And my question is, if, if you know, you could come up with North Dakota, you could say you could come up with something you could think. I say that just because I'm in the southern part of the country and that's about as far north as I could go. I, I guess I could go to Alaska. Um, but but if you, if kids hesitate in answering that question, um, I don't know if they're going to have the passion to do it. They, they like it, but they don't have the passion for it. If, if anybody just summed up the world of travel baseball in, in one three minute dialogue, it, Jeff Willis just nailed it. And that, that will, for me, forever be the analogy that I give of the country club. Jeff, I want parents to understand because you just broached this subject with me over the summer. And again, before we started here, can you talk a little bit about your pitching staff? You know, I got a lot of parents that want to come at me and my son is, uh, Hey, listen, my oldest son, Kyle, was 86, 92. Every once in a while, he'd pop a three, but he was basically 86, 88, didn't work hard at it. But, you know, if he had, I'm, I'm sure he would have been a 90, 93 guy. But tell me a little bit about your pitching staff today in the fall of 2022 at LSU Eunice, just to give student athletes and parents an understanding of the talent level that you're, you're dealing with now at, at, at LSU Eunice. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, I think a lot of people are always surprised um, – <laughs> a lot of guys are throwing 90 miles an hour now. You know, I, I can go back 10, 15 years ago and, and 88 was kind of that threshold and you got guys throwing 88 and there's, there's something there. And um, I, I mean, we did a pro workout on our first day and we had 12 guys that were 92 plus. Um, <laughs> and, and so there, there's arms out there um, that can do some things. Um, now our guys, we start our fall world series um, tomorrow night. And so I'm, I'm excited because, when our guys get here, they all of a sudden get in the weight room because most of them haven't been in the weight room enough. And it's easy to have passion out there on the field and get after it in your in, in, in your bullpens and your PFPs and, and as a pitching and, and that kind of on the field workout stuff. But it's a difference when you get in that weight room because that's going to be the separator. Um, and, and we got a lot of guys that don't want to lift heavy and this this you need to have some flexibility. You need to be stretching and those things. But you you got to move some heavy weight. Uh, you know, if you're going to put on some some strength and do some things, uh, but this that whole thought process has gotten into the into the game that you know we don't want to move heavy weight because we don't want to tighten up. We need to stretch, but we need to be safe. But we've got to move some heavy weight, and so um, I think the key for us is making sure we find guys that can have repeatable deliveries um, that can throw it over the 17 inches. I, I'm I'm big on. I don't know if you can teach a guy how to throw strikes. Um, I know there's some guys out there that say that, um, but yeah. You know, I've been coaching college baseball now, I think 23, 24 years now. Um, and if you, if you can't command the zone and you can't throw it over the 17 inches, um, they're, they're, you're going to have a tough time pitching because now all of a sudden you bring the big inning and the crooked number into, into play. And most games are won when you score, you know, more, more runs in one inning than the opposing team scores in the entire game and big innings, crooked numbers, they can't happen if you don't, if, if you, if you don't walk guys. Well, I think, by and large, my opinion is, is that most families, uh, student athletes, we are so focused on showcases and tournaments and all of the things that go on through the spring through October. We neglect the strength, the size, uh, the nutrition, the sleep, all of the things that become paramount when you become a, a college athlete as well as potentially a, a professional athlete. And you, and you hit a big piece of the sleep. Sleep. I mean, if you're lifting in the weight room and you're busting your tail in there and then you're not sleeping, then your, your muscles aren't recovering. And so, um, you know, you know all, all of that has to be taken care of. And, and I think a lot of times high school players or younger players, they, they see, you know, they see Vanderbilt playing, they see LSU playing, they see Ole Miss playing, they see all this and they see the, the, the lights and the glamour and all this. They're, they're not seeing what those kids are doing, you know, in the dark when nobody's watching and, um, and I think it's a it's a huge wake up call when they become a part of it, because I have not met a player that has not been blown away by it once they step foot on that campus that freshman, you know, in August of their freshman year. 
Yeah, when your feet hit the ground in college, regardless of the level, if you're not prepared to be, it's a business. I mean, it takes a daily discipline, a daily routine. And I have a question that just came in. I know the answer to this, but can you share with parents and brag a little, because I know you'll hold back, but brag a little. Tell the people that are listening where you, Eunice, you send student athletes, not only to professional levels, but all levels of college baseball. Would you say, would you venture to say that the vast majority of your athletes that play for you at Eunice do in fact move on to a four-year scholar college? Yeah, we've had, we have, we've had every single player of ours. This will be my 21st year here. We've had every single one of our players here that have had that opportunity at the four-year level. We have never had a player that did not have that opportunity after they left us. Now, some of them chose not to, you know, some of them chose not to. And, and I mean, one, some of them went to firefighting school. Some of them went to into a med program. Some of them wanted to kind of do in that. But every single one of those players has had those opportunities. Um, you know, 59 draft picks through the years. I mean, we've had the SEC player of the year through us. We've had the Johnny Bench Award winner, which is the top catcher in all of college ba- baseball through us. Um, we've had numerous, I don't even know how many NCAA Division I All-Americans that have been through us. Um, and so, you know, with the draft picks, a bunch of players in the SEC um, throughout the years and all those, you know, G5 programs, mid-majors and all the way to Division II and NAIA programs as well. And, you know, it's, our role is to get the players, develop them and get them to the next level. Um, and I, I think a lot of people get caught up in wins and losses. And, and I'll be, you know, Walter, you know me well enough to know I, I don't deem our success based on what a scoreboard says. Um, it, it's more important. I think for the parents out there, it's very important to find programs that are developing them as men, not as baseball players. Amen. But developing them as men, um, because I don't care if you have a big a big league career for 20 years, you're, you're going to be a husband and father, a man for the rest of your life. And you're going to be professional on something else other than baseball. And I tell people all the time, we don't find out how good our teams are. I don't care if we dogpile at the end of the year, win a championship. We find out how good our teams are when all those kids are being husbands and fathers themselves. And I don't think winning's on the scoreboard. I don't think with, with winning is how much money's in your pocket, with how much power you have, how much fame you have. I think winning is taking your God-given ability and talents that you've been given and developing it to reach your full potential in every single area of your life. You know, and winning's not a sometimes thing. We've all heard that. We've all heard um, Lombardi say that. Um, but but winning's an all the time thing, and winning is not with what the scoreboard says, because we've all played games where we played really, really well. We came out second on the scoreboard, but then there's been the games we played very, very poorly. And we came out on top of the scoreboard and a true winner is not satisfied with that kind of stuff. And so we, 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 we don't talk a lot about the scoreboard. We talk about the process and, and we've got some, some cornerstones in our program of, of the number. The first one is develop. We will develop men, develop men, not baseball players, and I've even started telling recruits this. I don't care that much about your baseball career. And those eyes will widen up when they hear that. Those parents like, because I know they're only talking to me because of the baseball picture. And I have to hey, stay with me here. Um, but I want them to understand there's a lot bigger picture than this. And let's develop you as a man and what it's going to look like for you to be a husband and father. And then that baseball player is going to work out and be a part of that. And so, other piece of that is we'll deserve to win. We want to deserve to win. And, and uh, I think we all either we either deserve to have something good happen to us or we don't. And that's all controllable. And as coaches, we're all trying to trying to talk about the controllables out there. Well, I know as a dad and I can talk to uh, Kyle's roommates, Kale Jones, Keegan Kratzer. I mean, I see them now as parents, as fathers, as husbands. And I it speaks volumes. Uh, as to the value that you as a coach and mentor and Alan provided to these uh, young men back when they were in their you know late teens, early 20s. Uh, I have a question, two questions that just popped in just now. One, okay, coach, I'm from New York. You're talking about North Dakota. I want to go to LSU Eunice. How am I going to get in front of a coach at Eunice when I'm way up here in New York? How do I contact you or or Alan, or any other member of your coaching staff to get in front of you as a staff? Yeah, I, I, it, it starts out by sending an email, a, a detailed email, not not a form email. Um, you know, my 
my coaches, and myself, we receive, you know, 15 to 20 correspondence a day. If it's coming from a recruiting service and it's a form email and they've changed out a name and they've changed out a, a mascot and, and done that, and you can tell it and it's sent to 300 people. I'm not even, I'm not reading that. I'm deleting that um, because you're casting, you're casting a big net and you're just hoping something sticks. Um, but when we get an email that you can tell it is, it, it is to us, it's been directed towards us. We're going to read that. Um, it, if you could have some video in that, we'd like to see that. If you're a pitcher, if you had some radar gun readings as a part of that um, in the video. So, so now we can see that for ourselves, not somebody telling us that. If you have a professional scout in your area that you can put down as a reference um, or, or, or some other group that we might know those individuals that we because because recruiting a lot of times goes off of who you trust. Um, and I, I tell people all the time, I'll, I'll never if I call LSU, I call Coach Corbin at Vanderbilt um, and I, I called Coach Corbin at Vanderbilt with Javier Vass and, and right. can he play. Can he play? for Coach, he can play for you. The makeup's right. He can play for you. OK. You know, they sent out a guy. Yep, he can play. And, and that my word's going to mean something. And therefore, tell the truth, uh, because the other part of it is you might not be for us, but I, I want to help kids out as much as I can. And I might be able to make a phone call to the guy down the street or somewhere else um, as well. But don't don't fib on, on those types of things. So send an email detail or in. We've got prospect camps. I think that's we can't get out and watch everybody. Um, those are opportunities that we get you on the campus. You get to meet our staff. We get to spend the day with you. Um, we get to see your stuff in person. Um, I can tell you there's some of those recruiting websites out there that will, will, they'll say the guy ran a 6'6 six, six in the 60, and all of a sudden he gets on campus and he runs a 7 flat. And we're going, the stopwatches don't line up. Or or we see radar gun readings, and and all of a sudden we get them our radar gun, and they're different. And and so now they're, we're, we're, we're going to triangulate the information. Okay, we're not going to take just one person. We, we've got to triangulate that that information, put it all together. Um, you know, some some kid told me he was throwing 92 miles an hour and he was using a, a, a my pocket radar. And and uh, it's a little different than our, <laughs> our 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 gun that's got the spin rates and everything on it. That you know, that's the spin rates telling us something. You know, and we wanted to make sure we got the best technology. We've got that out there because now those breaking balls are going to play up and. There's, those are things you can see with your eyes, but when you all of a sudden have the technology to back up what your eyes are saying, you can't go wrong. Well, I always try to tell parents, I get asked probably 50 times a month about recruiting services and so forth. And I will always tell parents and student athletes, it's simply not going to get an engagement with a college coach. They generally know where it's coming from and you're best served by being accountable for your own you know, college uh, experience and, and send a heartfelt uh, letter to an email to a coach and have a little idea, have a feel for who you're talking to in the school you're, you're, you're talking with. Uh, another or, parent. Or, or send a letter by snail mail. Right. Oh, that's a great <laughs> I mean, thing. That, that right there, it's handwritten. Right. It's handwritten. I mean, oh, I, I had you're that and, and we still remember that kid. Right. And that, and to me, even at the Division three level at the NCAA, when I would get a handwritten letter, and this was way before all the metrics and analytics, it showed an initiative from a student athlete. Okay, at least he knows who the heck we are, and at least he has some interest in our program because he's talking about our majors and our, our mm. record. He knows my name, et cetera. Dad is asking, is velocity the only barometer? Are, mm. are you looking at pitchability? Are you looking at projectability? Um, you know, if somebody is like slightly – you know, let's say uh, in the eight, mid 80s, 85, 87, but has good feel for secondaries. Where are they on your radar? No, they're, they're no, they, they, they're there. They're there because pitchability. Um, when I, when I've got a kid in my office, I'm trying to figure out if he's shaving yet. You know, there's just, a, there's a <laughs> lot of things, you know, and I'm looking at dad is, is dad, is dad got stubble and his dad shaving every single day that he, when he wakes up. And the kids is not shaving it once a month. I mean, there's going to be a progression that's going to happen there. Um, but no, I mean, I can think just when you said 85, we, we had a left-handed pitcher, Ben Bramer, um, his freshman year, he's left-hander, 83, 86, um, off the chart work ethic, off the chart attitude, had pitchability, could command the strike zone, 
could pitch to both sides of the plate, could, could get the ball glove side, um, could, could spin a breaking ball. Changeup was so, so he, he pitched, you know, not much his freshman year. Um, but all of a sudden some things clicked and all of a sudden that velocity jumped and it went to 92, 93. Our, our first day back his sophomore year, he was up to 95 in the pin, um, pitched for us, set our strikeout season record, um, went and pitched at Auburn after us. And, you know, he pitched with the nationals in the big leagues a couple of years ago. So coaches want to know, how do you know you have a, 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 a Vaz in your, in your program? Do, you, do they just kind of stand out right from their freshman year? Uh, I guess they're asking a reference to that SEC caliber player that whether it's Corbs or Vit or Jay or anybody, do you know like that, right, that kind of caliber of athlete right away when they show up on your campus? Well, some of them you do, but some of them, it, it, it takes a while. I mean, I, I can go to Javier. We also had a kid that same year, River Town, that went to Dallas Baptist. And 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 I think they were one and two in the Royals farm system. And and uh, that year, you know, one of them hit leadoff, one of them hit in the two-hole for us. And, and uh, you know, I, I think River just set the record for for the Royals farm system's consecutive on-base streaks in the, in the game setting. And, um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know when they stepped foot on campus, they would play in the SEC. You know, they, they had to work and they had to get after it. Um, they did have – they had very good strike zone discipline. Um, they didn't swing at balls. They didn't swing at balls. They were very efficient. They didn't strike out. They had great hand-eye coordination. They had some fast twitch. Um, and, and both of them played the game faster than what their runtime said. You know, so sometimes – I mean, Javier ran a 6-8 in the 60. But if you watched him play in the game for Vanderbilt and still bases at Vanderbilt, or even for us, he was playing the game like he was a 6'4", 6'5", runner and because there was instincts there. Um, you know, so, you know, we've had some guys in the past that 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 have – we've had, we, we had one kid one time, he ran a 6'2", 5'6", 3", but he played the game like he was 6'9", 7' flat runner in the 60 um, because the instincts weren't there. And, um, and so not always do you see that. It takes a while for them to develop, um, but they have to have the work ethic and they've got to have the right attitude in order for that to happen. Well, I'm just going to ask you for five more minutes because you just touched on two topics that I think are critical for parents to have a, a really better understanding as to what's really going on with regard to our sport from the professional level to the college level. Yeah, And I don't want to take a deep dive into travel ball, but we talk about instincts. Can you kind of just tell me your your opinion when you're out recruiting within the uh, summer circuit, I guess we'll call it. We don't really see a lot of that uh, scoreboard competitive games. It's like, we know we're only out here for an hour and a half, two hours. I'm really trying to get my, my reps and look at me kind of thing. Do you think the travel as a whole, not as an individual team, do you think it's slightly become watered down and less competitive, less about the we and more about the me. I'm just talking in general, not any specific. Yeah, yeah. I, I can give you s several specifics. That, yeah, I, I traveled to watch a kid in a team play one time, and they lost the game with a ball that was hitting the gap, and it should have been a double cut tandem relay, and and uh, did not happen. The ball goes over the cut man's head, and it's in no man's land. The guy goes all the way around the bases for it wasn't the inside the park home run. Somebody screwed up. Um, it should have been a double and it wound up being a home run and they walked it off. And I thought to myself, you know, the coaches are, the kids are going to come off the field. The coaches are going to gather up the middle infielders and talk about what should have taken. They didn't, they high fived them, you know, Hey, we lost the game. They, they, there was no, no talk about that. And so, you know, I, I remember back, you know, 15 years ago, I could, I could, in our state here, I could go see four, four programs and it covered all of the best players in the summertime. And now it's it's watered down, and and it's how do, how do you how do you get out and see all those different teams now, when when all the best players now are spread everywhere? That's very very tough to do that, um, and and there are some that are doing a very very good job. Um, I, there's several in our state that are doing a very very good job, but then there's some that are around the country and that are just money grabbing, you know, these kids and doing that. And I can tell you, Walter, I'll tell you this: when I show up to watch one of those games, you. You can tell when someone's talented. I want to see what those kids are doing when they're not playing. I want to see, and I'll give you this specific, you know, one of what myself and, and Coach Ori and Alan Oregon, our pitching coach, this was several years ago. We drove four hours to watch a high school game in the springtime. 
really good player, really good player. And uh, I make sure I don't ever, I don't wear our stuff. I don't wear something with our logo on it. I don't want someone knowing that so, because they'll play different if they think oh, yeah. somebody's watching them. And yeah. I want to see what they're going to play when they don't think anybody is there. Um, and I try to get close to the, as close to the dugout as I can, because I want to hear. I want to hear what those kids are saying. I want to see their mannerisms. I want to see if they are team guys. And so this kid um, was was on – he hit, and he uh, got on base. He walked. The next guy comes up, hits a home run. And so he was on first base. They jog around. He didn't even wait at home plate to high-five his guy. He's going into the dugout, and I hear him say, I call that seat there. And and instead of he stood at home plate high fiving the guy that, hit, that drove him in, um, and then getting over there and high fiving the rest of his teammates and celebrating with his team, he was more worried about trying to get the seat, the best seat to sit down in the dugout. So I, I guess he was too tired to stand up and, and root for his players and 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 be a team type of guy. And I looked at my assistant coach and said, "Look, we're gone, we're gone. He he, he can't help us." Um, and he wind he winded up uh, signing at an SEC school. He was drafted out of high school. He was cut the next year at the SEC school. He went to another junior college, didn't pan out there, and was out of baseball. And, and he was drafted out of high school, and he'd gone to an SEC school. So he had the talent. He had the ability, but he didn't have the want and the desire, and he didn't have the team values and the team, the coreness of what it takes to be a, a selfish, a selfless type of teammate that's, that's required if you're going to reach your full potential. Um, and so I, I want to see how – how do they get on and off the field? I, I want to see how they interact with their teammates. I want to see how they play catch before the game. That That's going to tell me a lot. If if they're going out there and they're just warming up and they're not moving their feet and they're just going through the motions, there's not going to be much passion because that's an opportunity you're either getting better or you're getting worse during that time. Well, I can tell you I'm getting a whole list of people that are asking me, I wish I could play for this guy. I wish I could play for this coach. And a couple of questions have come in, and I know that you're humble and you're not going to answer this, and I want to answer this succinctly for a couple of people that have asked. How can a coach of this magnitude and level with the, you know, the record and the resume not be, you know, in the professional coaching ranks or Division One coaching ranks at higher levels? I'm going to tell you right now, when Jeff Willis tells you he's trying to raise men, he's not just saying it's not lip service. The other thing is he's emerging. In the, this is his program. He has children, two daughters, his wife. They live in the community. Of director. This is a coach that is the epitome of the word mentor. This is someone that you remember when you're 50 and you say, remember Coach Jeff, remember Coach Willis. And so if you're a parent or a student athlete and you don't end up going to LSU Eunice, you should have listened very closely to the message that coach states clearly and we're not picking on travel baseball we're not picking on coaches we're not picking on athletes you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to make a decision you know are you going to be a we team player a part of a program or are you going to try to be a guy on an island because those guys end up like the ss minnow shipwrecked and you don't hear from them again so i want to jeff as always, I know when people ask me, when are you going to have Coach Willis on? I know it's the fall, so I appreciate you taking the time. I know we got a little purple and gold World Series going on, and I appreciate you taking a, a night and, and spending it with me and with all of us. So I say thank you again as a parent for everything that you've ever done for both of my boys, not just Kyle. And I appreciate your time, and I look forward to speaking with you again into the spring when we can kind of talk a little bit about in-season college baseball. Sounds good. Hey, Walter, thanks again. And I and appreciate what you're doing for the game um, and, and everything that you're trying to do to educate people. I, I can tell you this, the big man upstairs is gonna, not going to ask me how many wins, how many championships we had. Um, and he's not going to ask you how much, you know, he's going to ask us what kind of impact that we have on the people that are around us. Well, I know it's from your heart. The parents that ask me, so I appreciate everything you do for the sport and the game at the club that's taken the time to listen to us tonight, specifically gaining all of the insight and knowledge from Coach Jeff Willis. 
uh, LSU Eunice. I want to ask anybody, if you have a question, a comment, a concern, if it pertains to uh, Jeff Willis, you can reach him uh, on Twitter. What is that, Coach J. Willis? Is that what we got? Yeah, Coach Jeff Willis. Yep, Coach Jeff Willis on Twitter. Uh, obviously, you can have his email. Give it sh- sh- share with your uh, everybody your email address. That one is jwillis at lsue dot edu. Okay, and I'm going to put that in the description. Be sure and subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. It helps create an awareness. We're going to be doing this every Thursday evening for the duration of 2022 and well into 2023. I'll have Coach Willis on in the spring. Coming up uh, next week, we have Mike Baxter, recruiting coordinator at Vanderbilt University. He'll talk about Vaz and a few other athletes at Vanderbilt. We do it at 9 p.m. Eastern. Follow along here again at Baseball Lifer on YouTube. Baseball 11, Baseball Lifer 11 on Twitter. Until next week, enjoy the World Series. And Jeff, thank you again. Thanks, guys. All right, Captain. Thank you, bud. Bye-bye.